Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Welcome to another PSVR 2 Let's Play, I'm Miles Dyer and today we are checking out Legendary Tales. Oh my goodness, I am so, so hyped to show you this because thanks to uh, the wonderful devs, uh, I was, like many other creators, given a game key uh, and have spent tens of hours in this game this past week. Uh, normally with Let's Plays, I tend to go into them blind and sometimes I feel like I might need to get stuck into this first because of the many mechanics. And you know what? I'm glad I have because there is so much scope to this game. But firstly, I just want to say something. There are many people watching who are really ready to dive into this game and are perhaps worried about being spoiled. So I just want to make something clear. I am going to be starting the tutorial and then starting a brand new character, a brand new game in which I'll be joined by my friend Johnny who has only just started the game uh, and I'll also be joined by two of the devs and what we'll do is we'll go around the main camp that you start in, we'll talk about the different mechanics because there were so many mechanics that me and Brian Poole, my good buddy from Without Parole, found out 10 20 hours in that we wish we knew from the start and so the point of today is to give you a bit of a taster over 90 minutes i'm not going to talk about end game stuff or i haven't even got to the end game or stuff later on i'm not even going to be showing you my actual character um instead going to start from new show you just the mechanics that i like even talk about things that i don't like so much because there are things that are you know not so good but overall it's a fantastic experience uh, so with all that said, do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and ring the bell to be notified of all future Let's Plays. Because as you know, for those of you that are regulars, I'm on a mission to Let's Play every single PSVR 2 game out there. And I've Let's Played over 165 PSVR 2 games. And the journey will continue with all of you. Um, and also do hit the like button. That's also very, very important. I have an in-ear so i can hear the chat right now hello to everyone much love to you all but if you're watching on replay hello to you as well let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and something i've started doing in recent let's plays is if you have some questions for me about the game 
do leave them in the comments section below because sometimes when I'm doing this I don't have a chance to answer questions or I want to think about it a bit more for the 24 hours after a let's play I tend to come back answer questions but yeah let's just jump straight into this so tutorial your current controller firstly I have to say this game looks beautiful the foveated rendering oh, I just wish more games use this so here we are and as you can see on my hands I have two bars blue and red blue is for mana red is for HP and this is such a small detail but I love it when you play multiplayer you can actually see the health and mana levels of the people you're playing with. I thought it'd just be, you know, blue and red strips, but you can actually see the levels. Now I play with all the comfort settings off, but here we are in the snow. Here we go. The basic movement and rotation controls are displayed. Now Wes uh, from Without Pro and Virtual Strangers was telling us that on the early access version, the tutorial was 90 minutes long. I can tell you now, this isn't 90 minutes, this is a lot shorter. But a part of the magic of the game is learning things as you go along. Again, so I'm not going to be teaching you everything, but I can't wait for many of you to jump into the game and for me to join you on future journeys and to learn off each other because there are so many paths you can take in how you build your characters and the things that you learn. So yeah, triangle. If you press that, you bring this menu up. Now, this was very overwhelming when I first played it, but I'll go through it now. On the left, you've got your HP, your mana points. Is that what MP means? And then you have your three main uh, characteristics. Strength, dexterity, and intellect. And now you'll set them when you create your character. You'll add certain points. But as you play the game... <laughs> someone said kill Jester. I love that. Um, when you're playing the game, if you're doing combat, you're going to build up this XP bar and build up your strength so you can get more strength skills. If you use daggers and bows and arrows, you're going to build up your dexterity and be able to get more dexterity skills. If you are using magic, you're going to build up your intellect so you can have more magic skills. And then down here, as you're going up levels, you're going to get points that you can invest on vitality for health, wisdom for mana, uh, and luck, which is like critical damage and also... Uh, for um, like the rarity of items that you find and then you have your armor and then your resistance to the different elements here is all the equipment that you've got in your hands or that you have equipped um, this will be regarding the item that you're holding at the time and then here are your items obviously I've got none objects and then quest items and that is just the first tab you then have magic and your skill tree and you can't see all this. Look at the skill trees. So for magic, fire, ice, lightning, psychic, fusion. And then abilities, if you're building strength, you got these. And for each of these, you can buy the first level and then the second and then the third. Dexterity. And then there's secondary. So there's extra things. So like this one here, passive. Or some of the good ones that I liked was this one, bulk up your max health. So it gives you plus six health per one vitality. So if you keep adding to your vitality and you level this up, you can become very full on health. So you have secondary and then you have legendary, which means when you unlock legendary items in the game, you actually get specific skills for those weapons. And then that is, that is the three areas. And that is just the first two. Then you've got quests, You've got um, the people that are in your party chat. Oh, sorry, that's the player list. This is, uh, oh, titles. You unlock titles for your name. Uh, all the controls. And, um, and like, actually, this is your, um, like, your, this is your diary, basically. This has information on everything in the game. Me and Brian Paul were reading this 20 hours into the game and still learning stuff and going, wow, look at this. Just learning about everything. You're not going to read it all at the get-go, but you have that. And then obviously you have your settings as well. So, there we go. I was just asked if there was... A, there is a slot limit. There isn't... Um, you don't become over-encumbered, so you can keep picking up stuff. You can grab an item by holding the grip buttons. So here. 
There was so much stuff. The beginning of the game, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to feel very clunky. Oh, that's just a bit of the environment. Look at this, though. I'm appreciating this more, playing it second time. To change the position of the hand of the object without dropping it, press and hold the button shown here. So look, so you can actually choose where your hand is using... <laughs> Looks like the uh, that dodgy shake thing in America. But using R2, it means you can change how you hold it. And you can also change hands easy and hold it anywhere. And it's great, like that. So there we go. Let's carry on. So destructible objects. Dude striking it, yeah. I think, yeah, a lot of destructible objects. Now, the tombstone. If you die, a tombstone will be left at your place of death. All items equipped at the time can be retrieved later by pulling the sword out of the stone. Now, I'm just going to holster that. Oh, it wouldn't let me holster it yet. There we go. But, something I only learnt 20 hours in the game... Brian and I got nervous because when you die in front of a boss and you go back, you're worried that if you get killed before you pick it, that you're going to lose all your stuff. I can confirm, unless they've changed it since we last played it, that you can die as many times as you want before picking up. But you take this out and then you get whatever weapon that you had slotted. And I love this. We're ready for battle. Now... Add an item to inventory. So, get close to an item and point to it. And then if you flick your right stick back, so if I go back to this, it just, and you put your hand over it, you can pick it up. So I'll do it here. So I'm picking the, I don't think actually anything's in there. So if I just um, drop the shield, you go near it and it also tell you. But if you put your hand on it and flick the right stick back, you can pick it up. And then in your inventory, I'll go back to the inventory slot. It's here. There you go. And I can equip it. And it's in my hand again. But then, I think it's going to show me in a moment. I won't get ahead of myself. Um, there are holsters on either side. So I've mentioned that already. I've got a wand on that one and a dagger on that one. But you can also do um, quick slots. So if you hold the top face button on each hand, look at that. And it means in battle quickly, if I put it there or there, I can just drop it in. So look, and then put my hand there and it's back in my hand. So in battle, if you want potions or anything like that, you've got that as well as your holsters. So that's all very, very good. The sounds are great. Are the controls intuitive? They are, but it takes a bit of getting used to at the beginning. It's one of those things you've got to stick with it. And, you know, not everyone agrees with me on this. I do think the first 92 hours of the game, there are some pacing issues. But stick with it because the game just keeps getting better and better. Um, right, here we go. So attack types. Slicing, using the blade, the sides of it. Piercing and bludgeoning, using any non-bladed part of the weapon. And if you do quick succession... It's uh, going to do less damage than if you do see slower ones like that. Stab. Piercing. That feels so good. And then bludgeoning at the back of it. And so different skills will, you know, be to do with that. Okay, right. Let me just holster that there. you got interactable. Actually, it's not a lever, so I can just hit it with the back. And here we go, we have Boner. What up, Boner? I remember how difficult I found this at first. Now, what I love about the hitboxes is it's not just a hitbox around the enemy. If I stab, it goes in the rib cage, and it can get quite awkward with some enemies because you're like, oh no, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I got, can I get my blade back? <laughs> and they always bow when they're about to die. There we go. Now, 
Now, now I'm going through a lot of this now, just so that when I've got the other people in the game with me, we're not talking over each other. It'd be very boring for them to wait. Um, when an enemy attacks, parrying the enemies. Yeah. Dashing, consume mana. Uh, yes. So you can dash now. You can dash. It's going to use mana like that. I don't like the dash. I think the dash... You can upgrade it, but like... Look at this. It's hardly a dash. And you can't dash backwards. If you could dash backwards, I think it would be useful. But you can't. You can only dash forward. Or maybe you can dash backwards. I've just run out of my mana. Now, very early on in the game, you're going to run out of health a lot. You're going to... Um, you're going to run out of mana a lot. Um, and you're going to have to spend a lot of time around fires because... <laughs> At near, when you're near a fire, you're going to generate HP and mana. Now, mana and HP regenerates around the fire pretty slowly. But what I loved about it, and when I spoke to the devs, they confirmed this... It is because... <laughs> I've been told to hold this, the sword from the other end. It's so that when you're with your friends and that, you actually... Sometimes I actually get down on my knee, I cook some food on the fire and that for health. But also it means while you're doing this, you then have a time to look and go, oh, have I gone up any levels? And what, what do I want to keep? And you have this feature where you can lock items so you don't accidentally sell them, which is really, really good. Unfortunately, you can't swap items in inventory, like rearrange. I'd like that. But it just means that the fireplace is a time to think about what you're going to do. Looking through the skill trees, maybe reading up on the uh, on the guide on, like, you know, different things like using a potion or checking health and mana. Like, it's great. So anyway, can I... Okay, so I can dash backwards. See, I love that. All these hours and I've not even tried that. Okay, items can be found inside crystals. To get an item from a crystal, grab and destroy it or throw it to the ground. Crystals can be found inside treasure chests or inside destructible items. Now, this was something I didn't know. Yeah, it's true. It shouldn't be slow the dash. Wearing armor or helmets will increase your defense. To put on armor, place the armor onto your hand. Yeah, and so you put it on your hand and it will be your armor for your entire body, which you can't see. Um... And you put a helmet on your head. So look, I'm going to grab the chest. Now you get these. Now for about 10 hours of the game, I was always having to put my sword down so I could grab the crystal and either throw it at the ground or crush it in my hand. Oh. Um, there we go. Right, I've put it on now. And then if I look here, you can see actually. There you go. It's, it's on my hand there. And I can click it and see the details. But... Here's a little tip, guys. This is going to save you a lot of time. When, when you find a lot of uh, these, just knock it with your weapon. There you go. Nice and easy. Although I am now actually going to have to drop it to put this on my head. There we go. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the fireplace isn't that slow, but it, it, it takes a little bit of time. When you're in battles and you want to get back into the battle to fight a boss, you want it to regenerate quicker, but yeah. Um, okay. So you can climb. It's. Uh, I mean, whoa. I don't know if they've changed the ropes in the last day or so. It's got a lot better. Oh, spikes there. <laughs> I love the sound effects. Look carefully. Sometimes you can find these shades in the wall. And they're randomised in each dungeon, the devs told me. Because if you knock them... Look at that. See, that's a nice breaking wall. Some of them look like styrofoam. Not going to lie. <laughs> right, you've got potions... No, I've not played Dungeons of Eternity, so um, I'd have to lend opinions on that to other people. Does the game ever feel spooky? Um, it's sometimes it has a lot of atmosphere, 
I wouldn't say I've ever been... There's a couple of times I've been made jump when I'm playing on my own and an enemy's just behind a door, but not too much. If you look above the inventory, you can open the quest tab to see what quest you have. So we've, we talked about this earlier. So if I go here... I've still got this. I found a mysterious portal to another world. So this is... You can do main or subtasks. So main tasks. Defeat the skeletons near the portal. Let's do that. Now, I did mess up a lot on this... Um, tutorial where I wasn't sure how to go on. Actually, I'm not going to use the dagger. So I was asking how difficult this is on your own. So what I love about this game is if you play on your own, you're going to be fine. But if you play with friends, if you play with two friends, the enemies are going to have more health. There might be more enemies. And when you fight bosses with multiple people, they'll have like additional mini bosses with them. And it scales up for two people, three and four. So actually, the dynamics of the missions feel different. So, um, yeah. You can interact with some NPCs in order to get quest objectives. Now, it does tell you this, but when I got to it, I wasn't sure what you're meant to do. So you just click that. I was like, what, how do you do it? So you point and you click it with the trigger. There you go. And then I'm like pressing the trigger but it's not working, so you press the X button to go through. Now, here's a portal. But let's just check the quest. New world. Oh, it's completed. It just says it. So, we're going through the portal. Where am I? Look at this. I believe you can give each other potions, yeah. I remember how difficult I found this when I first played in the tutorial, but now I've understood the game a lot more. I just love how they're jewels. <laughs> you just feel so badass. I've done it where I've jumped off massive heights. Oh yeah, there's no full damage in this game. I wish I learned that sooner. Right. Group of undead. Defeat all the undead enemies. You got it, buddy. I'm going to get you out. Bring it. You can't hurt them until they're fully up. Because that would be cruel. That See how that got stuck in its jaw? Amazing. Now, in the trailer, you see them, like, pick up a skeleton and lob it into a table. I've still not done that yet. You actually have to, like, develop skills for picking up enemies and that while they're alive. Um. Hey, buddy. Oh, more? so great in this game and this game was made by five people who are currently waiting in a game for me so I should probably right with now if there are oh, no there's no durability for weapons that was something I was worried about luckily there isn't my health. Actually, my health's doing alright. Now, something uh, Brian mentioned on Gamescast earlier was the haptics on the shield. When an archer shoots an arrow, I kid you not, you can feel where the arrow lands on the shield in the haptics. It is unbelievable. I am joining the devs off this tutorial. They're waiting in a main game, but I'm doing the tutorial before meeting them because... Otherwise, it'll be a bit boring than just waiting for me to go through the basics. And it's easier to go through the basics as one voice. There we go. A 
talking goblin. Ah. Oh, I've got to talk to him first before it lets me. Blah, blah, blah. I'll let you read that if you play the game. Get out! A talking goblin. There we go, got some XP. Use that portal spell I gave you and it should take you to the other small... Can I go in? No, it won't let me go in there. So, this is one of the coolest things. Simple spell. So if you press the face buttons closest, you bring up your magic wheels. You can set them up for each hand. And basically for portals, you use the trigger buttons to select. And then you just create a portal by putting it together, pull the triggers and bring it out. And there you go, a portal. It looks so good in the headset. We're going in. And there we go. That is the intro. I love the music. Uh, right, so we're going to select ca character. Create. And this is how you create a character. So it tells you what each of them are for. So you don't add points to these three. Uh, so I'm going to do what I kind of did at the beginning of my my actual game. I did. I think I did a couple there. There we go. Created a level one. So I click the character, and then I'm gonna do multiplayer. Join. I should be able to join. Ah, I can't seem to find. I can't seem to find my. Uh... Right, just give me a second. I'm just going to go and see where they are. That's interesting. Sorry, guys, just one second. <laughs> there. I should be able to see it on the list. Let me... Let me come back out again and try that again. So select, multi. Hmm. If not, I'm gonna have to set up one and let them know. Johnny, if you're watching the live stream, can you say something? If so, I might have to create one. Interesting. Right. Let me... Oh, that was interesting. Yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm yeah, I'm online. What I might do is just quickly restart the game, just as a precaution. And then I'll join. Not sure about languages, um, so I'd have to find out. But yeah. Hope you're all doing good. Hope that was a good introduction with the tutorial with just a bit more context. Um, here we go. Right. There we go. Right. 
Yeah, the developers Five are from South Korea. Hello! Wow. That's, that's brilliant. Oh, here he is. Hello, people. Curious. Sorry, I couldn't see Hello. the list initially, so I had to just quickly restart it. I was I was having heart failure, thinking, oh no, where are you guys? Miles, we can't hear you if you are saying something. They can hear me now. I had myself oh, muted. There we Hello. Go. Oh, okay. I couldn't Hello. I, I couldn't see you on the list, so I had to restart the game, but it worked. But um, yes. thank you for your patience. Now, before we start talking, I am just going to close off the live voice chat in my ears. I'm really sorry, people. <laughs> I will still be able to read the comments from time to time, but I'm sure you can understand. Um, yep. I don't want to uh, <laughs> have lots of voices in my head, but how are things going? Yeah. Um, we're good. <laughs> yeah? Just small chat. Small chat. So this is my friend yeah. Johnny, everyone, who's been on a few Hello. of my Let's Plays before. And then we've got uh, BJ here. Do you both want to introduce yourselves and uh, uh, talk about, you know, what you do um, at, the, at, the, yeah. at the company and how you're feeling yeah. about the game ahead of launch? Sure. Um, I'm um, aka BJ. I'm founder of Urban of Games and lead uh, developer. Um, that we developed legendary tales with five people overall, everyone I mean. Um, we have been developing f this game for years and now it's going to be released in 24 hours! Woo! <laughs> Isn't that painful and holding it like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's um, our, uh, one of our teammates. And uh, you can call Aros, Aros. and he, yeah, he is the uh, trailer director and the actor itself. He, the every uh, scene in the trailer, he did was his play. Well, we, I... we never cheated anything. Just he played that. So you're the nice. one that put that skeleton through the table. <laughs> take a bow. <laughs> take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> well, as as someone who does video editing, I have to say it's a really good trailer because one of the difficulties when it comes to virtual reality is capturing how it feels without your head shaking too much, and it's a really great trailer. So yeah, no, huge congrats. You uh, you you catch something? Yeah, yes, it's uh, his specialty that he that his camera never shake. Yes, and he take it perfect. It's awesome. So. Any video from uh, our company, due to our company policy, we don't lie. It's all live gameplay trailer. Right. We don't make any cinematic thing. Right, yeah, it's all Because in -game. I don't like it. That's fair enough. Mm. That's really, really cool. Um, great. So I thought what we could do to start off with is, um, I've told the live chat, because some people say, I'm going to get the game. I don't want it spoiled. I said, there's no spoilers. We're starting all new characters. But cool. what I... But it is just about g giving tips and explaining, oh, you got the magic ready. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is I thought we could just go round the camp that you start with and talk about like what you can do at each of the things. So um, do you want to lead us with maybe these these things here? Um, uh, we will follow you. Okay. Uh, Miles, it's your channel, so you explain. And if you need any additional question, then we can help. Okay, cool. Well, firstly, there's a quest I can take here first. Uh, do me a favor. And I do like a lot of the quests. The names of them are just like how they would say it in conversation. So uh, we need to find the missing merchant and kill the corrupted peasant in refugee camp. So there's the conditions. You've got to kill 10 of the corrupted peasants. Accept that. Oof, you gave me a shock. You did show in up here like that. I'm the town blacksmith and I'm in charge around here, at least temporarily. Look. I don't know what you're here for, but while you are, how about you do something for me? Fortune favoured us when we got out of that their town, but seems our luck ran out when we started heading towards that cathedral. See, the drawbridge is up, and we can't get over there. Sadly, it's the only way out of these mountains. Uh, that their merchant lady offered to find a way to it to lower the drawbridge for us, but I ain't seen her since. She's got to... Uh, she got some kind of sixth sense, so I thought she might handle herself all right. But, hey, you look like a fighter. You think you could go find her, maybe? No pressure or nothing, but we really need her. Ah, one more last thing. There's some crazy peasants wandering around outside the camp. Maybe killing them will give us a clue to the merchant. 
So, you know, you get like the you get the uh, quest and then you get some additional context. You can buy some things. But how I always feel with RPGs is don't buy stuff from the store until like towards the end game. Like just keep getting <laughs> keep getting resources. But this is the cathedral. And I will say this because this isn't a spoiler. This is like the yeah. opposite. As you can see I'd, over there, the drawbridge is up. Brian and I have both played 30, 40 hours into this game. And we still haven't got to the cathedral yet like so we're still wondering like what is it so there's so much game and we're constantly looking at this building and just going like we want to find out more and that's just such a, a cool part of the game um right so um over here we have this device because something you're going to be doing is you're going to be collecting a lot of loot you can sell it at these tables but sometimes you don't want to sell items sometimes you want to um well you want to put items in here uh that you basically grind up and then at the other side it gives you materials that you can use to create weapons which uh will show another time uh you I, have i can do it oh yeah, you can do one. it have you got some now cool yeah let's do it yeah oh, um... you put that sword in already ah and um should i pull Haha, <laughs> Miles, 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 that's not a role-playing voice. Yeah, I know, my bad, my bad. Yeah, go on, pull it down. And there it goes, it comes out. And what we've got here, we've got some uh, iron ore, and we've got, uh, and some birch plank. Um, and there are different types of material, and basically, if you have three iron ore, and you put it in here, it creates titanium, is that right? Yep. So basically, you put, uh, three of a, an amount in here to upgrade it to a higher value and the reason you do that is better materials allow you to craft higher level weapons I'm not going to go into all of that now we'll go exploring for a bit before we get to weapon crafting because it otherwise you're just going to be overloaded with too much stuff but um, yeah we've got this table for selling um, we've got um, I don't even know what their, what their name is here um, what's this character called? Uh, English. I'm sorry. <laughs> this character. What, what is her name? Is, is it she, she, she's the the alchemist. Uh, just uh, her. We we uh, her. Just we give them the role. So she is alchemist. Yeah, alchemist. That was it. Yeah, so it's the alchemist. So this is the alchemist. Um, and then there are a few other things that you open up. Now, a top tip I would give you in this game before we head off is these portals will take you to other portals around the hub. So this is like the main area. But then when you go into a dungeon, there'll be a new hub that you start off with. But at the moment, it doesn't work. Whenever you find one of these on the map, jump on it, because then it'll bring you here, and then it'll be on this map. And then you can go back on it to where you've come from. So you basically want to use all of these just so that you end up with a full map with all these locations so you can get around quickly. Um, Cool. Should we uh, go kill some of these uh, these possessed farmers? I mean, we've got this sure. weapon. We'll come to the weapon stuff later. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a bit of fighting and stuff. Let's get my weapons out. Here we go. What did you build your character as, Miles? I went with a similar to last time, so I've gone with strength with a bit of dexterity. What have you gone for? Dexterity? Uh, yes, I've gone for all-out archer. Nice. Whether I'm going to be any good is another question, but my aim's getting better. That's cool. It's so yeah, you have a bow on your back the whole time. It's not over the up; it's down below. And yeah, the bow and arrow. You have infinite arrows, and it feels great. But it's really so hard satisfying. to aim. Yeah, it's satisfying when you get the hit. I didn't know you could pick stuff up. In terms of what? Oh, these, yeah, you can pick. Barrel. And you can lob <laughs> it at the ground. <laughs> Amazing. I think I can break it in your in your hand. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! And I believe you were saying you don't get XP for killing the enemy, but you do for causing damage, right? 
So if you're all attacking an enemy, you uh, you're all gonna yeah. get XP, right? <laughs> oh, you're able to pick them up. I love the the, the slack jaw. And you can see those flashes when you get a critical hit, which is really great. Now, if you pick up an item and and drop it, no one else can pick it up because they own it. But that massive cauldron you saw back at the base, if you lob an object in it, it will turn back into one of those crystals so one of your friends can have it. So, um, when the game comes out, uh, I might be able to do some trips into some of the public multiplayers and, and give some presents out because I've got some lower level weapons saved because when you get weapons some of them have perks on them so if I click on this none of them do but down here they'll have perks and some of the perks are really great like enemies take damage when they damage you or uh, health regen this is such a cool building and this is using foveated, uh, dynamic foveated rendering, so where I'm looking, it's rendered best. So on the live stream, on the edges, it might be a bit rougher, but that's just where my eyes are looking. Now, there was a little flash then, which meant I went up a level, uh, which means I now have an available point to invest on luck, wisdom, or vitality. I'm going to get my HP up, so I'm going to do that. Ah! Oh, why would you be surprised? It's a Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, abilities. I've got two skill points here. So, because I'm strength, physical damage plus 10%. Yeah, I'll do that. I could do 15% for another point. But some of them will require, like, strength level or other items. Guaranteed heavy attack. Guaranteed chance of pushback mana cost. But I also, this is a good one down here, passive resistance against all of these. So if I do that, I think that's one of the first ones you should get in the game, actually. You get 5% resistance on all these elements, so that's a good one to have. But all the text in this game looks so clear. It just looks beautiful. It does look really oh, good. Oh, uh, by the way, um, all those things, like a text, yeah. it's not just a random thing. Um, you can see uh, other things in the town as well. The yes. text that uh, uh, actually history of this game that uh, event happens. Uh, each of story is uh, one of uh, our early access gamer right. uh, did something. So uh, we just uh, shoved in these things. Like uh, I think this this one is about um, a YouTuber. Uh, who streamed our game? Actually, he saved Legendary Tales as well, like Sony did. That's awesome. Um, and the other things too. Anyway, mm. yeah, yeah, this uh, other things like uh, this one. Someone cried that he lost a uh, tiger slot, the legendary weapon, and asked us to bring it back. And unfortunately, you know, say we cannot. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, recover save data from local so like uh, instead of that we shoved in as a story in that's the game. awesome that's super cool <laughs> having like meta lore that's, that's really, really cool. cool look at this it's amazing the clouds are great uh, i love the clouds and, and that. all right <laughs> How's everyone doing in the chat? Everyone doing good? If you do have questions for me or the devs and I don't see them, do put them in the comments afterwards and I'm sure the devs will have a look afterwards. Uh, happy to respond. <laughs> I always feel so mean. <laughs> Never stops feeling mean. When you fight, you know, tougher skeletons as you go on in the game, then you feel less bad. But these, they don't know what they're doing. But they are going to have more health because there's four of us playing. Oh, a blue one. 
So a blue one means it's going to probably have, look, 24% damage increase on slashing attacks. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll drop that and just put it in my inventory. Is this the one I want? Yeah, this is it. So this is going to do plus 24% on slashing. Oh, I hear something there. The suspicious man. I heard what sounds like a voice somewhere in the castle. I should find out where it's coming from. While investigating the abandoned castle, I heard a cry. Following the sound, I found somebody trapped and pleading for help. The baggage sounds so, so good. The castle is huge, so look thoroughly. Right. Oh, it's a dead end here. Can you actually use that as a weapon? That's, a... <laughs> That's so good. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> and what's really cool is, um, because of the, the contact, if someone brings out a sword, you can actually, yeah, you can actually parry. I mean, it's harder with a dagger, but you can actually sword fight with your friends. There's no friendly fire, <laughs> but you can just, you can also parry with a bow. Um, or an arrow. Or an arrow. Ah! Actually, yeah, you found this early. You can actually just go up to them and stab them, can't you? Yeah, you can do uh, a Legolas. At... Shoot it at my, um, at my shield. I don't know if it goes through it. I think it does, yeah, because I'm friendly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> knocks on my head. Shuts it. Satisfying yeah. from a distance and then seeing them move around with an arrow in the head. Now, the, this ice magic, if you punch as you fire it, it goes faster. So you can change the speed. It's so cool. How, how much I like this game. After this live stream, I am going to be playing this on my main account. <laughs> Head came off. Yeah, I got a critical hit on him. Nice. I love it when they keep turning around, not sure who to face. If you surround them, <laughs> that's always good. Uh, right, I've got another flash, which means I've got a skill point. Nice, let's have a look here. Health. Plus six per one vitality. So my vitality is two. So that means I'm going to get plus 12. You want some help? I'm good. I nah, it, it doesn't look cooked. It doesn't look cooked. Oh, it is fine. You know, no, fine. no, no, he no, it. no, no. <laughs> he ate it all. <laughs> 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 Oh wow, didn't stand a chance that one. Here we go, mate, into the, the refugee camp. And you got these. For collecting iron ore. Look at Flying it goes. And this is what I love. Me and Millhouse 18 in the UK playing with devs in South Korea. And actually, the other day, it was me, Brian, both sides of the Atlantic. It's three different yep. continents. <laughs> it was amazing. That's what I love about this. So, like, uh, with does uh, big shield, you cannot parry. Since it's, uh, like, in, even in real life, it's for, um, you know, defend your body. Right. Um, but... 
um, there is, you know, small shield, which is like, uh, just, we call it Pukula, right? Yes. Um, so they are actually have, uh, they have, uh, actually like a parrying bonus. So if you just, it's a small, so if you parry, just easily you can parry them. But between, um, Bukula and this big shield, you can, uh, would you drop it, actually? Uh, you, if you point it out. I think I have a, uh, a buckler. Here we go, look. Oh, I've yep. got this. Yep. And if you just point it out, you see the um, right upper side uh, below the price. Yes. It shows STL strength. Strength, yep. But yeah, if you see the buckler, it's, it's a dexterity. dexterity. Correct, yeah. yeah. So, so actually, if you want to do um, the two dual buckler style of fight, you can do. Right. And, uh, you know, like a critical build or, you know, CD key build you can do with shield. Or you can have two big shield and then you can be tanky for your friends. And if you parry with a dexterity buckler, do you get dexterity points or not? Uh, yeah, XP? Yes. yes, you do. Exactly. So your uh, primary uh, status increases based on which item you use. That's intellect. Yes, I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Right. Let's go back to this. How are you finding uh, your experience with the game so far, Johnny? <laughs> He's putting the headset back on. Yo, Johnny. Hello. Sorry, I was having a... Is all right. I was asking <laughs> how your uh, how your what, what your thoughts are of the game so far. Yeah, really enjoy it. Um, I think I've played probably not obviously not including the stream. I think maybe three and a half hours um, with you um, earlier today and yesterday, and yeah, really really enjoying it. Um, like every time I play, I learn something new, and yeah, it's, yeah, really it looks okay. really good in the headset as it, well. Yeah, it really does. I have a thing. Oh, uh, so, um, I asked Johnny actually earlier that, uh, where he is right now with that, uh, his own character. And he said uh, so he played three hours, uh, and just, uh, he got in first dungeon, like, start of first dungeon. I'm like, ooh, we didn't expect that because, uh, we, as a dev, we always, you know, internally test out three hours, we just clear. Like, uh, we are already in the second dungeon. Yeah. So, I told on Reddit and any community that we expect playtime to be 15 hours. Because based on our experience, sure. we just uh, plus uh, 20%. And then now it's uh, kind of doubled. Yeah. So actually, I said 15 hours, it became 30 hours to finish first game. I really actually surprised that you and uh, Brian took like 30 to 40 hours and not like yeah. finished yet. I th and I think that does come down to the fact that we're brand new to the game and a lot of time you spend is just learning stuff, discussing it. There were things that yeah. I learned 20 hours in. I, I say I wish I knew at the start. I don't wish it was told to me. A lot of it, I like it's, it was called discovering it. And just to let people know on the live stream, I, although I've given a lot of tips, I've barely told you anything. Like, the skill trees, you need to look <laughs> at it. You're going to be spending yeah. a lot of time on it. But, um, yeah. And, and the other thing I will say is, like, in the opening two hours, um, I think mm -hmm. in some of the dungeons, I think it's quite um, a slow burn in terms of there's very few enemy types and that. Because it's, yeah. just, it's just starting the game. And I found that as mm -hmm. the game goes on, the game just keeps getting better and better and more and more interesting. Yeah. Like, it goes in the right direction. Um, we really um, being careful with uh, you know uh, learning curve during the development. Yeah. So first dungeon must be like kind of uh, another tutorial, but you know while you getting better in the game and learning uh, and catching the game feeling. So um, yeah. And also I don't want to uh, burden too much to the gamers uh, with tutorials because uh, you know like uh, 20 years back then uh, the game just throw you into the main game without tutorial and I really miss the feeling that you know I want to getting no you know not you don't need to teach me that like everything like nowadays yeah so uh, instead you know you just we throw you in the game only 
just we teach you just small amount and they give you idea to think you by yourself yeah and then getting know the game so you feel deep taste of the game that's it anyway so this um this portal is one of the ones i mentioned at the the base people so as soon as you stumble across it you step on it you're back at the campsite and now on here it's added it and that's the refugee camp so now it's it's always going to be on here so you can always teleport to that part of the refugee camp so you go there and if you want to be cheeky if you're playing with a friend who hasn't unlocked <laughs> this yet well you can just whoops wrong button get the portal up put it there and then obviously if they were there it's now appeared over there and they can go in that portal and they can join you so um it will always the, the port will always go back to the to the hub of where they were uh which is really really cool um hello one of the um the questions um a lot of people were asking was um about what this game is like single player compared to multiplayer um Obviously, if you're playing with more people, the enemies have more health and the bosses have, like, more enemies with them. Um, so it scales up accordingly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think in both modes it's, it's really great. There was a question specifically about it. I can't remember now. Um, Roman Plays was talking about a sword Brian was speaking about earlier. There's a lot of legendary weapons in this game. I've barely scratched the surface. The one that I have, I'm not going to say what it is, is absolutely badass. And I feel like a god when I use it. I just, I have a special move that just tears through enemies. Um, it's a double-handed weapon, so not using a shield's quite weird. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs> right, we are going to stay away from here because here, and I'm not going to show you too much, but there is a, a very angry dude over there. Um, that you can probably see in the distance. Um, and uh, yeah, I need to be a higher level before we take him on. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy coming across him in the game. But what we'll do is we'll go towards, um, is it Blightiff? I always forget the name of it, but the uh, the first cave area uh, we'll go to. It's a really cool environment. Different single player multiplayer uh, in being as a dev game design wise. Um, uh, I really uh, recommend uh, and want to encourage people if have chance uh, play so uh, do solo play if they any chance because uh, a lot of uh, fighting mechanics uh, are like included um, solo fight. And you will, uh, after a while, like uh, let's say after being you finish the game, if you come back here, uh, it's not about character itself levels up. Actually, gamers, uh, fighting skill, you f you can feel you leveled up. And now you you sometimes when you start game you die here, but when after you come here you never die here because you can parry their attack everything every yeah. single attack that's the game design we wanted to do so during the solo you can learn that that's true yeah i've definitely learned coming back here i love this um <laughs> flag and the skeleton up there that's amazing yeah <laughs> don't hit your mate's head oh yeah head. wow i felt that ghost above my head Oh, I went up a level there. <laughs> Johnny just bopping on the head. Just quick. I need to find a club him. so I can bop people more. Oh, I've got a club. I'll give you one. Actually, I can't give you it until we're back. 
Um, I'm being asked how are the haptics. Um, can you join random lobbies? Yes, you can. If, well, people have to host. Um, oh, and someone said, wait, opening a portal makes it appear in the hub. If my teammate dies, they can just teleport back. That's so good. Yeah. So before we're doing a boss fight, we always put portals up. So if one of us dies, we can come back and pick up our stuff. Um, haptics are great. I think in some times they're quite subtle, and that's not in a bad way. It's just... Um, it just feels very nuanced. Um, and often, I think the best haptics are the ones where you don't really think about them. Like, when you're parrying, it feels good. But the one that blows my mind is the shield when arrows hit it. Uh, and you can feel where it hits on the shield. Um, and then the last question that someone asked was... Um, I can't remember. Is it just me, or does it look like PSVR1 graphics? I mean, honestly, when you put the headset on and you're in here... It doesn't look like PSVR 1 no, graphics. It really does. The fidelity in this is incredible because it's using dynamic, dynamic uh, foveated rendering, which does mean on the on the live stream, it's rendering in high quality where my eyes are looking. When I was doing uh, Red Red Matter 2, same issues. It meant that where I'm not looking, it will look low quality, but that's just because it's doing where my eyes are. So there is that. So you just got to keep that in mind. Um, but no, it looks really good. And like the lighting, I mean, in a moment you're going to see something that's got great lights. But even the weapons, um, like when I look at the shine on that, it just, it looks really good. It's, it's honestly one of the best looking games. And it just makes me always think, with so many other games, I wish they used foveated rendering. And I know it's not just a turn on button. It takes a lot to get it to work, but... So, like, uh, um, the foveated rendering, with eye track foveated rendering, yeah. we use uh, 2.5 times, like, higher regular scale yeah. than original scale, and 2.5 times is the maximum we can do. Right. So, like, we are using the maximum number, so I, you do math, like, you look up the headset, what's the resolution, just right. you, you can multiply there. Right. That's awesome. So it's a super sharp. You, yeah. You know. And just like all the rock textures and that just look great. Um, so right. So what's going to happen now is we've got to the first like... I don't know what, what you call these. These are called like areas. Like I don't know what you as devs call them. but You, um, you can dungeon. They, they are just dungeons. So we're going to travel yeah. to Blighthaven. So I click and then everyone else has to ready up to join. Or I can say no. And you can, and so you <laughs> could stay here. Yeah. Or no, do we all no, have yeah. to? Or, oh, so we, we all. It will be, it will be cancelled. Everyone has to oh, travel wow. together. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Because. <laughs> because. Go on. Obviously, you can't talk to each other in the loading screen. I do think the loading screen is the worst bit of the game. That loading screen graphic could be better. That's the only. Yeah. That... Like, uh, we. You can. You can say like a no or cancel. It's a because. You know, like uh, other friends don't know what you are doing in other places, you know? Yeah. So, like, uh, you can decline. Yeah, so there's been times where I've joined other people hosting multiplayers, and you'll spawn in the hub area. So, like camp, treat this like the campsite. So, you've got a teleporter, and it's not going to teleport you anywhere. But as we find teleporters, and if you create a portal, it will bring you back here. So you can't get back to the campsite until you go outside that door. But this lighting here, the shining through. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Oh, um, I was going to give you a club, uh, Johnny. Let me... Uh, and there we go. I can show you. So we go. So I could be a Flintstone. You can be a Flintstone, <laughs> yeah. So what you do is I can't give it to him until I put it in one of these. And then it turns it. See that? Ta-da! Yabba dabba doo! So, yabba dabba <laughs> Um, cool. What up, buddy? You good? What have you been up to? Alright, don't talk to me then. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, survivor, here we go. Search for the farmer. The goblin mentioned. Here we go. 
again I'll let you uh, check that out. Some of the skills that are good to learn early on is, um, I think one of them you can get straight away, which is, um, let me find it here. It's in secondary. Uh, oh, where is it? There's one for, oh, mana recovery. Yeah, first one on the list here, mana recovery. So you get mana every three seconds, one mana every three seconds, which is just good to have that on the go. You can get it for health recovery, but for health recovery, you've got to do one, two, three, and that one, four. So that's going to take five skill points uh, to get there. But that's a really good one to get. So that's another one I'd aim for uh, in the game. Just have like, and it also means when you're around the campfire, it's quicker as well. So um, yeah. You guys go on ahead. Uh, I'm just going to be reading the, the chat quickly. Uh, just seeing okay. what other people are asking. Um, yeah, I can't hear people, I'm afraid, because um, I've obviously been with these uh, developers. Uh, AJ's playing right now. That's awesome. Yeah, it's four-player multiplayer, so I can't um, team up with him at the moment, unfortunately. Um... Is there a chest in camp where you can store precious items? Great question. See, this is what I like about these questions because um, there's a lot of things that I just overlook or haven't gone through yet. So, you guys keep going on. I'll catch up. Um, so, here, you get this chest at every hub and you have your stash, but you also have lost. So, if you ever drop an item and don't use it, you can pick it up there. So, if you lose an item, you can pick it up um, and you have your inventory. Uh, and you can just put it there uh, and keep it in your stash. And like a lot of games, where you know, this is accessible in all uh, all the different hub locations, and you can also do it with your objects as well. Um, so there's that. But as I've mentioned before, if you die, you drop your stuff on the floor. But if you die again before you get it, you can still pick it up. Hello, sir. Can I help you? Oh, meat. He's going to cook the rest of it. Go on, stick your meat on the fire. But don't burn it! Oh, dude. That's disgusting. I've got a bone to pick with you. Yeah? I wish you could fight with it. <laughs> Might be actually. I don't think... I don't know. Find out. Let's find out. Let's uh, actually do some magic. Uh... I mean, I'll just do ice because I've done it already. So I'm going to choose ice there, and then you can equip it. Oh, no, I haven't. I've done fire, which I've never done before, so. Oh. And guess how you direct the fire? It's using eye tracking. It's where your eyes look. And I assume you can make it go faster if you punch. Yeah, you can. God, it feels so good. damage. The bone does one damage. The bone does one damage. Amazing. Yeah, it does damage. <laughs> That's so funny. So good. Abracatabra! <laughs> Right hand using fire magic and the left hand shield. That's it. Any combination you want, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's great. Yeah, you're, you're like a um, tanky Gandalf. Yeah, <laughs> tanky Gandalf. <laughs> Gandalf the tank. Yeah, exactly. You shall not pass. And me and Brian were playing, and he had an ability on his weapon. He was a mage, but he did have a sword that meant when the enemies are frozen, he gets mana back. So when he was running out of mana, I would then use my ice to freeze the enemies. 
and then he would be able to hit him with his sword and get his mana back. So you can work out not just the different skills and how they work together, but what has happened? <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't see that. Oh, oh I'm out of mana, that's why. Oh, a little dagger. Oh, that ping! For a critical hit, it's awesome. Hit him with the meat. Go on. The sound it makes, the slapping sound, <laughs> is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that meat makes a very meaty sound when it hits him. Go on. Arrows. Hit him. With your meat. Slap him with your meat. <laughs> that sound is ridiculous. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do when you're a tank is like you literally throw up your shield and your sword at the same time. And just like. Ugh. I love you can just pick up anything and use it as a weapon, it's great. <laughs> Should we just That's all so get. Good. We're just gonna go into battle, just meet. Meet, assemble. <laughs> well, let's see what items I've got. I mean, I've got, uh, I've just got a bit of um, iron ore. Oh, here's another thing to learn. When you have a stack, you bring it out as a bag, which is nice. You can keep it holstered there. Now, if you want to take out an item, you just quickly grab in and remove it, and you take one out. Or, if you slowly do it, I don't know if it's actually going to do it with that, because there's three in there. But no, I think if there's four and you do it slowly, you split it into two, which is really, really good. Uh oh, Mazi, you, you missed um, drunken bar fight here. St oh yeah, <laughs> I was breaking up the drunken bar fight. Has anyone got a key? Go for it. No, you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You want me to? No, sit? no. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> You're so lazy, Mr. Meat. Here we go. There we go. Alright. Uh, boring. Oh. Now, I at, when I played this with Brian, we were like, right, we've got to go back now and round. Not realising that there's no full damage. Whey! Let's go. Let's make this interesting. I'm gonna go around and just get everyone. I'll be like Jesus and these will all be my disciples. Here we go. Hello. Oh, there's also bats. And one of my favorite things to do in this game is to smash bats out the sky with your shield. Never stops being satisfying. If you hit one with an arrow, it's so satisfying. Oh yeah, yeah hitting one with an arrow would be sick. It's very hard to do this. <laughs> I actually did it with pot luck. Alright, alright mates. Ooh. Oh, there they are. Well, you have... I'm like, dead. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, oh. Can one of you create a I'm portal for me? Yeah, I, I will. Thank you very much. There's one already, I think. Oh, there is one there. That's cool. Oh, there we go. Here's another one that's just been formed. Prepared earlier. Prepared. This is one I made earlier. So, if I go round here... Oh wow, I've got to go among them all. Yeah, I have to wait. By the way, do you lose you lose money when you die as well, right? Yeah, when you die, you lose money. When you pull uh, pull your grave, grave, it's fine. Okay. It's but, free. But you do lose money every time you die. Yes. Oh yeah, I've lost uh, a lot of money when like, I die. Uh, yeah, when you die, like 20%, I think. Oh, it's a percentage. I think that should yeah. be. I think that should be less. I don't think it should be a percent. I don't know. I think it should be less. Uh, 
twenty percent of what you had. So that like uh, yeah, I lost. Dive, I, I lost about eighty grand on a boss yesterday. It was horrible. <laughs> horrible. Well, here we go. We got him away. Right. Here are the bats. <laughs> there we go. Go on. Like, and the thing is, <laughs> uh, all all of them, all of them are physics handled, fully physics handled, and you feel no frame drops, right? That, that's it. Hey, 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 um, Johnny, oh say, God. Johnny, say, you, you and who are, you and what army? You and what army? <laughs> this army, <laughs> army of the dead. <laughs> Oh, swap time. I will save you. Whoa! <laughs> I saved your life. I don't, yeah, I know, but I've lost my bow. I think my bow's back in there. I don't know if I want to go back in now. <laughs> right, mate. Run let me just, away, let me just read the chat while you're dealing with that. So in this dungeon, like uh, hundreds of enemies, like uh, physics handled enemies exist, and then like still we keep uh, uh, 90 frames during the multiplayer. It's amazing how good it is uh, in frame rate. Headbite, you got nothing to apologize for. Um, it's um, you can have as much conversation as you want. God, I'm just reading all the stuff about meat fighting. Is there durability on items? No, there's not. Um, I'm so tired of full damage. Almost always the reason I die in game. Yet yeah, no, no full damage. You're gonna have a lot of fun jumping down. I've got a great clip of me jumping down so high up and landing on a skeleton with my sword. I look like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Just absolutely wrecked him. Uh, I love grabbing bats out of the air and making them kiss. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, right, let me just hydrate. Oh, just caused a bit of fire in my hands. <sighs> can we still catch bats? They're asking. Can you actually? Yep. You can. Can you actually you grab can. them before they're dead? Yes. Wow. While they are flying around, you can catch them. I didn't know that. Might Whoa. be up. Right, there's, there's my Use bike. your imagination. Yeah. So there you go, learn something else. Oh. Let me, let me sh it's, it's, it's Brian! No, Brian! I'm sorry, oh. Oh, poor Brian. It's my friend Brian. Can you Why shoot would you the, uh, rock, the, the stones? Yeah, I mean, if I can hit it. Oh, that was close. Let's just do it close. I knew I was going to miss it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can hit it. <laughs> you can hit it if you can hit it. <laughs> right. Gonna read the chat for some questions again in a minute. Um, basically, there's there's the the main mission, uh, like the solution or the end of it is like around the corner from here. Um, but we're not gonna we're not gonna show you it because I want you to be able to find it out for yourself. But um, this is a big area, and yeah, I spent a long time in here because you. Constantly healing, learning stuff. Oh, oh, there's a bat. I got it. I got it. I caught it in my... Wait, is it dead? No. There we go. I got it. <laughs> you got it? Now I can... Oh, you can't do damage with it. <laughs> Give them rabies. That's it. I mean, they they can't really fight when they're they can't fight when they've got it. <laughs> they, they, say they probably already have got rabies. You oh, I died. <laughs> Whoops. 
That's what happens when you're screwing around with birds. I know what you're thinking. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Yeah. I... <laughs> One feature request in this game. I wish you could give the thumbs up. Yeah. What? Ah, okay. Yeah. Th A thumbs up. Okay, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, when okay. you're uh, uh, until your finger is on the uh, joystick, and then, yeah, that would be that would be cool. <laughs> it's my new half? friend. It's uh, half man, half bat. I'm sure there's a yeah. character. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the, the next upcoming character. <laughs> <laughs> there is. So Miles, uh, oh, this Miles. is the next upcoming character. Wow, Batman. <laughs> Batman. Yeah, man, it's wow. man bat. Man, man bat, sorry, man, man bat. bat. Man bat, yeah, sorry. We have to keep copyright. Yeah, yeah. Bat. <laughs> Warner Brothers, please don't take down this live stream. Uh, no. Bat person. Bat yeah, person. Yeah, bat person. Right. Um, no, there's a, a feature I genuinely would love you to add, and that is when you're going through your inventory, I wish you were able to swap slots around. So, like, when I'm looking at my storage, being able to swap items around and their positioning. Oh, uh, positioning. Positioning, like, so you could swap them around. Because I like to organize, like, my different resources okay. and stuff. Okay, uh, definitely, we will consider. Don't, don't lose sleep over it. Don't, it's not, <laughs> okay. it's not urgent. Enjoy the launch, but... Um, I actually have written a list of like wish list of features for this game, but I think that's going to be something you're going to notice about this game is as all these people start playing it, you're going to get all this yeah. feedback from people going, "Oh, I love this," and "Could could could we have this and this?" And obviously, you're not going to be able to do everything. Um, right over here. Often you find these, and they're often going to be good, which is a nice little area. And as always, you get one of these, you jump on it. No. You're back here, and then you get. Uh, the, f the first rest point. And I love that they're just called very matter-of-fact things. Like, they're not given outlandish names. It's like, what would you actually call it? Oh my goodness, you are terrifying me with your weird hands. Oh, bat hands. The first bat hands. Bat hands. I'll get back there. Okay. Right, just having a look at the chat. That's a great question, Pete. I'll ask them that in just a moment. Um, yeah, exactly, Peerless Cloud. Inventory management would be a nice to have, I agree. It was when I was looking at um, my storage of like all my crafting materials. What we'll do in a minute is we'll go back to camp and I'll show you how to craft weapons and then I think that will be how we end it. Uh, everyone loves all the shenanigans you were doing. So... Um, you can join public multiplayer games, yeah. So you can just like host one and then up to four people can join you. Um, and Stike says, like Sephiroth, yeah, I probably meant Sephiroth earlier. Um, okay, this okay, is the question. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, like, uh, I guess we have to leave. It's because, uh, like, everyone's uh, office now. It's a uh, oh, I see. Office hour. We work time. Well, okay. Before you go, I've got one more question okay. from you from the chat. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in the chat, they were asking how both of you are feeling about tomorrow, like, and launch. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Sort of, um, uh, yeah. Excited, nervous, but, uh, like, uh, you know, my I, every time I told you that, uh, actually, it's uh, our kind of life time achievement and i really do wish we sell well so maybe in the future we can make you know next you know legendary tales 2 or whatever it is because current version of legendary tales you have no idea how much we had to cut out from the original ideas right just we just uh, pack into the small things so yeah i'm really excited nervous and many or mixed uh, feeling but I have guts that it, my gut says we will do well. So, awesome. everyone enjoy the game. That's really Please. cool. Well, listen, um, I'll let you both head off. Um, but I just want to say a massive thank you for spending time for this uh, live chat. We're just going to go back to the camp and uh, just craft some weapons and, and then uh, wrap things up. But yeah, just uh, thank you to you both and uh, all the best with the launch. You're welcome, and 
everyone if have any question um ask miles because he played a lot and if you need a dev answer please uh you can visit uh, our official discord channel and then find find me bj and ping me up anytime i i cannot guarantee you live um real time answer but you know like um how can i say um anytime when i see the discord i will answer you yeah high five but also high five bj yeah one one mm -hmm. thing please one thing. please after the game has launched please get some sleep yeah. Uh, yeah, i will your actually, character but... looks very caffeinated right now but um <laughs> <laughs> but honestly do get some good rest man um you've worked been working tirelessly like the updates that you've been doing so quickly lately um, I've been yeah, really, like, really uh, impressed with it and that. Until but. the release, I'm going to do like a wrap up today. I actually like um, I uh, one information I can give you that is you know currently what you are seeing the dungeon. It's not a final lighted dungeon. So we are actually the um, upcoming like day one patch. Let's say uh, there will be and uh final dungeons will be a bit different you know more dark wow know, solely I, I i could say solely. solely and then um yeah there are uh there are bugs internally we found and they will be fixed everything we are like uh it's not because uh, like uh, like because it's a launch day we are just sitting not sitting there we just constantly finding a uh, bugs and problems and then we fix and so everything will be pushed to like uh today and then you people can enjoy game most cleaned version that we can offer wow amazing i think oh. you should be really proud of what you guys have achieved from is it here? five five five, five, people. five people it's amazing it's really good uh, yeah like uh, uh yeah but we did really our best with only yeah. five i'm That's really great. proud of myself yeah you should be yeah all right guys so have a good day if in South need. Korea, yeah. and uh, we'll be chatting mm -hmm. on Discord and stuff, so all the best. And I know the chat will be sharing it as well. Yeah, everyone's sending uh, yeah. lots of love. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. BG out. <laughs>
Yep. Let's go. Whee! I'm the loading times are ridiculous. Like, um, really, really cool. So we can talk to her, but we're not at the moment. Um, what we'll do is, um, actually, I'll go to this machine and I can do it now. So, um, actually, I had some items. Also, on a random side note, when you when you put uh, weapons in here, when you pull the lever, all you can see all the mechanisms spinning around. You can, you can see that. I think if I yeah, yeah. if you pull it now, actually, I think it will. Oh, oh yeah. just tug on you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, look. Oh man, this weapon stuff's gonna be awesome to show. See this stuff, the gold. It comes with all these things like what whole armor, parrying damage, mana recovery after each kill. So you just get all these really cool perks. Um, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to grind it all up. Put it in. <laughs> and then... There we go. Now, I one of the missions you get a bit later is from him is... I think it is after speaking to him now, but I'm not going to do it um, to show you anything else. But he says, go and make a weapon. And it was only when I was with the devs and they showed me, I was less intimidated. Because I was like, oh, what are you going to do? Because basically, here you make like the top of the weapon, so like the head of the axe, the head of a, is it the ma the maul head, is it a mace, a pole arm, and then you got the blades. But the thing is, like I would spend all these resources on like let's say the broadsword blade, and then I'd come over here to make the handle, and I would select you know, um, here we go, gladius handle. Oh, this is one of the things I told him cancels misspell, so they're, they're going to fix that. Um, well, they have fixed it now. No, they haven't. Uh, they have fixed it. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, I'm dyslexic, but that doesn't no. look okay to me. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it, so it was it was Ellie originally. They have fixed it. Uh, this is cool, this is the cool. thing is I'm like yeah. over questioning stuff now. And then I would create a handle, but it was on Gladius handle, and then you've used all these resources, and now they won't fit together. So this is how it works. For this. Uh, you're going to need metal. So in your objects, you've got these metal pieces. You've got birch plank, you've got iron ore. Okay? Now, this is going to get a bit technical, but I'm going to explain it for people in the chat. So as I said, if you take it out slowly, it splits it into two and two. But if you put one piece in here, it goes up one level. Because iron is goes up one level. But you can only use a maximum of ten ingredients. Which means... You can only have up to a level 10 weapon, which in the early game, that's fair enough. We're just going to cancel it. And there it is on the floor there. So, you can find higher materials, but you can also make them, which goes back to this cauldron where you can drop items if you want to give them to other people. But when it comes to this, you want to basically, I think you need to do it separately, like over here first. So let's just, yeah, I'll do it slowly there, so i got... Oh, dropped it. Um, I don't know if I can actually put them in the bag. There's some bits that I'm always a bit... Nah, I don't think it will work like that. Oh, now I'm taking stuff out. Let's have a look here. There we go. Two. There's the... <laughs> Getting a bit of a mess here. So, what you do is, when you have three of an item, whether it's the wood or the rock, and you put it in here, it will turn it into the next element. There you go, titanium ore. But, it has to be uh, multiples of three, or else you waste material. If I put six in there, I get two. If I put nine in there, I get three. If I put eight in there, I get two, which would be six, and then I lose the other two iron ore. So by having just under the third multiple of three, you actually lose those two. So you always want to make sure that you've got multiples of three in there. So anyway, why titanium? Well, it's the next one up. I don't know. I assume it's three titanium to get the next material, but it might be different. Because titanium, when I put it in there, level four. Which means if I used ten titanium, because you can only have a maximum of ten ingredients, goes up to level 40. But you can mix and match. If I put that in there, iron is one level, so it goes up. So there we go, level five. So let's just say we're doing that, right? We're doing uh, the broad sword blade. 
and it's level five and it's like okay that's what we want to do so this is how you do it so you get this you start pumping this this is amazing and you'll start seeing <laughs> nice hands there we go we've got this has come out and so what you do is you pick up don't touch it's hot you're gonna burn <laughs> and then you put it on here put that down you get the hammer and you start hitting either side I mean, you can keep hitting one side. It is literally reacting to what side you hit. There you go, and it shined. And then you put it in the water to cool it down. There we go, nice and cool. You can pick up your hands and then we can just like put it there. Now, make sure I've got the broadsword almost didn't now it can be a different level because that was a level five this could be like let's say this was level 10 it would then be an average when you connect them together so it'd be like level seven or eight so you generally want to if you're investing stuff make it match the highest one so here we go we've got birch plank and like with the rock oh, for every individual one one level but you can also get better wood go in there and upgrade it or find it out and about which will give you four levels per piece but we're just going to do five because then they match so five pieces there and then you slot it in i haven't even looked at the chat i bet there's lots of people going isn't that so cool i stopped watching here just to go and add money to my playstation wallet that's amazing <laughs> um so we spin this round go and then we've got this and so we pick this up and we slot it in and there we nice. go nice got a sword but it's not ready to use yet because you have to sharpen it so <laughs> you then have to get an item which you do get from missions and that and again because this is a character i'm not going to use i can do it let's see if i speak to her, i think she gives me a favor Uh, cool. You can sometimes choose what reward you want. Okay. So this is what you'd want to buy, but it requires 500 honor, and you get honor. I can buy it, I think. Can you? Oh, cool. There you go. Can you? Will I have to put it in the cauldron? No, 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 uh, no. Uh, or maybe, but I wouldn't waste it. Try I wouldn't it. waste it because that's 500 honor. I'd keep that for later. Keep it for you. Don't use it for this demo because they're really expensive. So um. Oh, this, this is my... Uh, I just did this for the uh, stream anyway, this character. So. Oh, you did? All right, okay. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's see if it works. I think, actually. Cool. And then... It's so good. The haptics. That looks, that looks really cool. Oh. But then what you can do is you can add dust to increase the levels. So if you get legendary dust and make it... What, what are these called again? I keep forgetting. They're called... Um, whetstones. If you make it a legendary whetstone, it turns it into a legendary item, and the legendary items are absolutely badass. So now, if I just put it on the ground, let it float up, I can have a look. And there you go. Uh, it's level 5, so I can't even use it. So what's great about these <laughs> weapons is you can swing them around, but it's not doing the <laughs> sound, and you can't use it. So me and Brian played a match where I had like a level 33 weapon, and I was like 27. And, I, and we were training up to finally be able to use these epic weapons, and it was so satisfying in this game. Um, but yeah, it's cool with the guard, and I love that sort of stuff. Um, right, I'm just having a look. Does this release at midnight? It's going to release at 11pm UK time on Thursday the 8th, so later today. Um, and it's so it's it's going to release in 22 hours 22 hours from now it will release um, yeah any other thoughts <laughs> I do wish you could do single fingers and, and thumbs up thumbs up would be cool but look these are tiny yeah, things exactly it's always stuff that you know they can they can add but the other thing cool I am going to request cool from them is, um, I mean, I'll do it with one of these bags, is 
Oh, you can do that. There you go. So something else I didn't know. I wish you could put it back in, though. You can't do it like that. So, see, when I do that by mistake, it's like, oh, fuck. Because when you're in battle and you want to quickly get a potion out and you've got a bag of these, I wasn't able... If you pull it out, you can quickly get a potion and eat it. So you can do that with, like, bags of meat. So nice. that's good because when you're battling, you don't want to have to keep putting your weapon down. Um, so, yeah. But as, as I said at the start of the live stream, people, I've put 20 to 30 hours into this. Brian's put like 30 to 40. We've still not even got into that building. I, and look, I assume you can go in the building. Um, that's a part of the thing that mesmerizes me about this game. It's just like, what is in there? Like, that would be so cool. Um, oh, yeah. And here. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Have I got my weapon I've just made? Let's have a look. Did I pick it up? Oh, yeah, I did. I put it in my quick thing. Forgot the most important thing. Once you've made your weapon, you go over here. And then you can name it. But with titles, oh, pre-selected titles that you unlock from doing different achievements. So at the moment, I haven't got anything. But eventually, you've got, like, Shine. The shiny... Uh, it'd be called the, the shiny crafted broadsword and that. And it also, when it has abilities, any weapon that you have, you can put it on here... And for money, you can re-roll the um, different slots for different abilities as well. That's so if you, have cool. a, if you have a weapon that you like, it's got a good number of slots, but you're not happy with the perks, you can put it on here to um, give it... It's not even interacting with stuff because it's not, it's, I'm not a good enough level for it. See, if I did it with... <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Um, I think we will wrap up the... Um, the stream. I'm just going to have a quick look to see if anyone has got any final questions. Um, am I getting off? I will be, yeah. Um, all the details are in the description for this game. Um, I don't know if it's listed on the store yet. It's priced, but I think it's going to be around $55. $50, $55. Um, so 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's correct. Slap nuts, great name. Excellent video, Moles. You're explaining so much. You're going to save me so much time playing this amazing job. Well, I just want to help get you started because, as I said, I there was so much stuff that me and Brian were learning, and look, a lot of it you are going to still be learning yourself, and it's really fun. But there was a lot of stuff of like, I wish I kind of got taught that at the beginning, because, for example, as far as I can tell, you can't re-roll your stats. So what you invest your levels in. That is a commitment. And in some ways, I think that's actually a part of the beauty of the game. You've got to commit to the character. The devs were like, oh, I've created a new character because I now want to be an archer this time or something else. Um, oh, yeah, this is what I was saying at the start. You can see that I've only got half my mana, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be a simple multiplayer game where you look at each other's hands and it would just be like a blue and red. It would just be full at all times. But on this, you can actually see... If one of your teammates are uh, injured, which is uh, super cool. Um, awesome. They have thought of so many things. Yeah. Well, when I first met him, he just jumped into a game when Brian and I were playing, and he was saying, "Look, I'm a gamer. I just think about what." And this is this is what you hear from a lot of devs. Even like when Minecraft was created, and and, and to be fair, I'm sure a lot of devs do this. They say, "What what is the game that I would like to play?" And so he thinks about all the games that inspired him and they just keep adding it. And I, I'm just blown away. Like de dev dev work is just magic. It's alchemy to me. It's just mind blowing what they can do. And uh, yeah, um, as I've mentioned earlier to people and I'll just say it again, I do think that this game has some pacing problems at the beginning just because those skeletons and those um, possessed like merchants or farmers you fight a hell of a lot of them and there is some variety in terms of you fight some archers and some that throw stuff but there was a bit where I was just like okay where's this going and it does really pick up so just stick with it um, and you might actually get through it a lot quicker than me and therefore not have that problem um, and also there was one particular dungeon again I'm not going to give any details where Brian and I had to go through it five times to grind to have a chance at beating the boss because the boss was absolutely horrific. But I think another issue was, because we were learning the game, 
for ourselves, we were investing in perks where probably I should have put a bit more into my health. Because I was like, yeah, I was really strong in that. But then I had no health, so they could literally just kill me in one hit. So it's about, you know, strategizing like what everyone's going to do. But I'm really looking forward to people playing the game, hosting online matches. And I kind of did this this past week, just jumping into random matches. And what you do is you spawn in the hub they're in. So if Johnny was out there fighting now here, I would jump in. I could speak to him on voice chat. But what happens sometimes is they're not a microphone and I can just go up. And I can see like a trail of loot or <laughs> and I can follow it to find out where they've been. Where there are enemies, oh they've not been here, they've been here. And even that sort of stuff is really, really cool. Um Awesome. Um Alright. Johnny, um I think we'll wrap it up there. I wanna say a massive thank Sounds you because Johnny and I, it's way past our bedtime. <laughs> I've been a, up since six <laughs> and he's been up since six so huge trooper um, no Johnny thank you so much man and I'm really looking forward to playing more of this with you yeah um, definitely, definitely and I'm looking forward to seeing you out there but as I've always mentioned people um, uh, this is um, on my let's plays for the next 24 hours if you have any questions for me or the devs I'll tell the devs about the comment section um, do put them in below and I'll do my best to um, respond to them uh, Brian Paul and Without Pro has done a great review I say a great review I assume we'll it's going to be great because it always is um, I've not seen it yet um, but I've linked it in the description of this video as well including the trailer to this game uh, the links to the store description all the information that you need is in the description of this video do hit the like button, do subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of all future Let's Plays because I'm on a mission to Let's Play uh, every single PSVR 2 game out there. I think this brings us to like 165, 166. It's a lot of VR games. Um, Johnny, you're going to log out so um, it will um, kick, kick me out. out, but I'm going to just give some final thoughts on the home screen. Yeah, sure. So um, I'll, I'll give you a text afterwards, but um, thanks yeah, a lot, cool. man. See you later. Really appreciate it, dude. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Or better save. <laughs> better save, he said. Right, everyone. Um, so, um, my final thoughts of this game. I feel like I've really spoken a lot about it in the discussion, but um, I always talk about this in a few categories. Graphics, audio, haptics and feeling, and then gameplay. I'm going to be very quick because I've talked about this a lot already. Graphically, this game is stunning in the headset. The dynamic foveated rendering is incredible like it's amazing what it's done um, and the devs have actually shown me what it's like without and with it and the difference it makes is incredible um, what you see on screen is not going to do this justice um, but saying that like this isn't like the best looking game you've ever played in VR we always think of things like red matter and, and all that sort of stuff but for what this game is as a pretty much an open world game it's really awesome. And I look down here and I can't wait to discover what this is all about in the game. Um, I've played 20, 30 hours. I've still not seen this. I don't even know if this is a route you can go to, but that is kind of the, the mystique of this game. It just keeps you wondering what's coming next. But I love the environments. I love the lighting off the weapons coming out of the um, cracks in the roofs. Um, it's great. Um, audio, this music. BJ told me it was him he produced it and it was him, his mate or someone on the team did all the music for this game. The music for this game is amazing. It's so epic on boss fights. Love it, love it, love it. And it's it's it complements what you're doing. You're never thinking, even if it repeats, you're not thinking about it. It's just like complementing your experience. The sound of parrying and getting those critical hits feels great. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, there's other bits where the sound of enemies probably is a bit repetitive and that, but it just sort of comes with the charm of the game. Uh, so audio, um, I've been very, very impressed as well. The only audio I do have an issue with is those long vines that hang from the ceiling. They make these rustling noises and it sounds like there's a massive squirrel climbing them and that. Like when you're near them, they're so obnoxiously loud. Uh, that just always tickles me. It's really, really good. Um, haptics. Haptics, I think, are great. Um, 
Sometimes you're like, I think I wish the haptics were a bit stronger, but sometimes it's like the subtlety that can make it much more impactful, especially if you're doing a lot of fighting. You don't want, your, you don't want to run down the batteries too much, and also your, your hands are going to get knackered from it. Um, but as I mentioned, there was something that could be a trick it's playing on our mind, but Brian and I, he, he brought it up first, and then when I noticed it, I was like, oh my god. When you're holding a shield and an arrow hits the shield, you can feel in the haptics where on the shield it's hitting it, and I don't know how to explain it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, is there headset rumble? There must be. You see, it's one of those things where it's so complimentary of it all. Um, but I, I think it, it's great. Uh, and then finally, gameplay. The question I always ask is, am I having fun? And the answer is an absolute yes. I have just gone to bed every night wanting to play this more. And my concern when I started playing the game for the first five hours was... I don't want to get to this let's play having you know not played a lot of the game and being like well it's really good for the first five hours and then you know it just it stays repetitive fortunately it does keep getting better um but then again i i don't know like i don't know how much more i've still got to go but the journey is what it's about and i'm having a great time and i just can't wait to as i say jump into games and uh you know learn off different people their different skills and um I believe it's going to have a platinum trophy. There's no trophy list yet. Uh, it's really, really good. So, um, you know, RPGs I do enjoy, but, like, I don't play an awful lot of them. I do play them from time to time, and it takes a lot, I think, for a, to play a lot in a, um, a VR game as well. And so the fact that I've spent as much time in this as I have, um, I, sp I think, speaks volumes. And just speaking with the um, devs, and look, this shouldn't... You know, be the only reason that you support a game and stuff. But I do think it counts for something when they're responsive, they're passionate, and they take criticism on board and, and make changes. And uh, I just wish them all the success because that's what we want to see with PSVR 2. Um, I don't know if there's going to be crossplay with this. That's one question I don't know about. Uh, it probably says something in the description and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, those were my thoughts. Um, for anyone out there that is still going to hold off for a bit, um, I totally understand um, because money is a very personal thing and I'm never here to say you should buy this. All I can do is give my thoughts, give you some context and then you can make your own judgement if this is something that's right for you. But um, yeah, um, I've been Miles Dyer. Thank you for watching another PSVR 2 Let's Play. I've got a few more coming up this week. Uh, so do subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of all future Let's Plays. Also my weekly Wednesday show, Miles Dyer Live. Uh, and I'll also be talking about this more on PSVR about Pro with Brian uh, on Friday night as well. Um, but until next time, I might see you in one of these dungeons. So hit the like button on your way out. And uh, a massive thank you to everyone for tuning in. And someone just said in the chat, crossplay confirmed. Excellent. All right, guys, I need to get some rest. Have a good one, everyone. And I'll catch you later. Bye-bye. That music. <laughs>